I think the future of college sports has been something that's yeah. been in question, you know, for a little bit now. Last mm -hmm. couple of years, we've been in the middle of a transition era. A lot of people saying, why does the NCAA even exist? Mm -hmm. Oh, to get mad about a hamburger? Okay. Oh, to say something dumb. Oh, to keep a guy off the field for no reason. Oh, what's the NCAA's true purpose at this point? Why don't they just create a league mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. moves the NCAA the hell out of the way? Well, the internet was a buzz last night as College Sports Tomorrow was revisited, which is basically the vision of a Super League with 70 teams uh, with a bunch of different divisions. Bottom division is for the low ones. You can get relegated, delegated, going through that whole thing. Yep. There'll be TV deals. There'll be revenue sharing. And, and there's a guy who's the right-hand man business-wise of Roger Goodell, Brian Rollup, who's actually involved in this. So hold on. Hold the phone. Okay. Is there all of a sudden a league coming to the future that is a professional league that is involving college sports and universities that, you know, maybe moves the NCAA the hell out of the way and now we understand a little bit clearer picture going forward. With this, there'd be free agency periods. There'd probably be rules on contracts. There'd be a salary cap. Ooh. There'd be times in which you could do stuff. It would mimic what's probably happening in the NFL, and the NFL would also finally have a feeder system. Now, what does that mean for all the other sports, though? We're just talking football, football, football. Well, mm -hmm. it's called college sports tomorrow, so you would assume that there'd be some sort of development for the other sports. Now, would those sports have to make money <laughs> for a professional league to potentially be in there? Yes. For sure. What does that mean for everything else? Who knows? Joining us right now is a man who might know what the hell's going on? The authority of college football, formerly the authority of college basketball, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, Pete Dammel. Yeah, Pete. Pete, nice fountain. I, it's nice to see you in your backyard there. Uh, how you doing, pal? <laughs> I'm good, Pat. I uh, just got to Phoenix for the uh, Final Four. Okay. So this, is, well, uh, this is at the hotel. I don't, in South Boston, Massachusetts, have a fountain in my backyard. I don't actually have a backyard. So. Hell yeah. Oh, okay. I just assumed you had a nice big spray of your pizza. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, just the White House. Just the Hill Estate. Yeah, I, I, I felt there was a three to four minute drive down a driveway to Pete Dammel's yes. house. Yeah, there you go. You know what I mean? Yeah, Gate absolutely. open, uh -huh. right. paparazzi. The authorities home. Yeah, sorry, sorry. You know, today, mm -hmm. yeah. all the way back. That might have been your backyard. Okay, thank you for clearing it up. And obviously, you're in Phoenix. What are we even talking about? Yeah, yeah, come on. Obviously, you're in Phoenix for the Final Four. You will never stop. But let's go back to what we were just chatting about college sports tomorrow. And I think whenever we hear from the NFL world that one of Roger Dell's tag team partners, Brian Rollups, involved. We're like, sure. well, it's going to work because that's kind of how this whole thing goes. What are we? Th what are our thoughts on this? What do you know that we don't know about this? And uh, how how optimistic should we feel about this potentially being the future of college sports? Well, I think Pat, uh, this this article emerging today, and we we wrote something about this, although that we didn't call it a super league about six weeks ago, is that. The future of college sports is very uncertain. In, in the fact that private equity, big hitters like Brian Rolap and David Blitzer, who is a you know a big time guy who's involved in sports ownership of a bunch of professional teams, the fact that they are essentially circling around college sports right now is indicative of the weakness. There is no future. You're 100 percent right. We're we're obviously lucky, Pat. Week in week out, we get to talk to a lot of the big brains, as you call them, around college sports, right? And I can talk to all these commissioners, coaches, athletic directors, really, really bright people. If I called 50 of them right now and said, hey, what's college sports going to look like in two years? No one's going to know the answer. Uh. Um, now, this is a potential answer, and these people are gathering because they smell opportunity, right? Like, it's, it's, it's very simple. This is, they are not gathering for benevolence here, right? They're gathering because they think that college sports are an undervalued asset. So um, do I think this sports super league as it's laid out is going to work? No, I don't. Uh, the, the, the paradigm of that they've that they've pitched people, if you will, has changed a few times to try to fit the, the, the current model. But I think the ultimate thesis of why it doesn't work throws down to this. If Greg Sankey, but they don't want conferences, right? So if you're going to try to X out Greg Sankey, Tony Petiti, and then the two major television partners for both those networks to then go back and get more lucrative television deals for the schools, it just doesn't seem to add up. All right, Pete. We appreciate the hell out of you, pal. That seems like uh, anything else you have on the on the subject that we need to know. No, I mean, look, we're going to be we're going to be at a time where change is coming, and it's going to be drastic. And I can't see around the corner right now to where it's coming from, Pat. Is it going to be Congress? Is it going to be the settlement of this House case, where there is some type of payment model through the settlement of the case that allows you know players to get paid, right? Like. Things are going to look drastically different in two years, and players are finally going to get a piece of the action. The, the mechanism of how that's set up is, is a grand mystery and to be, to, you know, to be determined.
Okay, so this feels like this is one attempt. Yeah. This is one group's <laughs> attempt to mm -hmm. potentially fix it. Yeah. There will be others. We appreciate you. Ladies and gentlemen, Pete Taylor. Thank hey, you. Pete. All right, about six weeks ago, we wrote about this. Yes. Mm -hmm. Seems like they're coming back now with uh, another angle. And that means, like, Roll Ops team and them are very interested in being the answer. Let us figure yeah. this out for the future. We all know there's a problem. But him saying that everybody's circling around is because they sense a weakness and they can figure it out, you know? If they figure it out, they know that this is a very, Shocks. very profitable. This is like what the PIF did with uh, Liv. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Whenever they heard about the PGA's weaknesses. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, uh, nobody makes any money. There's actually no guaranteed contracts. Oh, There's really? no Guys are actually losing money going to play in these tournaments, but what? the PGA, and they're like, oh, that's... Okay. We can fix that. Yeah. Here we go. Here's guaranteed money. We can do this. That's what everybody's going to be trying to do for the college football. Mm -hmm. This particular group here that has been written about a couple of times now, I guess, they, and they have Roger Goodell's right-hand man, they're having a relegation delegation yeah. at the bottom of the conference. Here's all the 70 Power 5 schools, seemingly. I assume they're guaranteeing a certain amount of money for everybody. Here's how this will work. This division plays this division. You can do it all, but... What he said there about, like, uh, Greg Sankey would then be just... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, that never going to happen. We know, yeah. Just a nobody. Now, Petiti, obviously, he carries a big hammer. Yes, he, he does. Uh -huh. yeah, he we does. saw that this past year. <laughs> yes, we big did. Big one. Petiti was doing things that Petiti's predecessor or no. predecessors yeah. had never really thought about doing. But no. But Petiti said, excuse me. This is my job now. You're in my conference. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. To the national champions. Right. Yeah. Yes. Now, so I, I think Petiti will hold a lot of weight because obviously he runs the Big Ten, which if you think football-wise, the only – I mean, this sucks for the ACC. I do apologize. Yeah. Big time. And for the Big 12, I'm not happy. It's West Virginia's conference. Now, Gordon Gee, who is the president of WVU, he said, we're in yeah. on this one. Need it. I assume Gordon Gee's potentially going to be in – on some other ones, too, because we're oh, yeah. in Big 12, and nobody really knows what the future of a lot of right. these conferences look like. So there's going to be a lot of different options, what Pete Tamil basically said there, as opposed to this just being the only option. Yeah, that's what's tough, is the Big 10 and the SEC have so much power. So if And, and we, like, initially when they talked about doing this thing, it was like, hey, Greg Sankey should be one of the guys under consideration to run the whole thing. So mm -hmm. if you think there's going to be some sort of plan where it's like, okay, Sankey, well, you did great, you know, kind of ushering us into this era, but <laughs> so long. Like, it, that is not going to happen. I can guarantee that. So, I mean, we'll see. It's nice that they've at least started to get the ball rolling, though. Mm -hmm. Like, it seems like this kind of thing kind of opens the door for other people to be like, okay, well, let's come up with our, our best plan of action as well. But – to his point about the two networks that have the two deals. That's the oh, whole yeah. thing that I didn't do. There's a lot there's there's Billions. a lot of money there. There's a lot of content there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which games are there? Right. You know, because remember Peacock came in with the Big Ten deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Fox still owned a majority of the Big Ten mm -hmm. deal. And CBS. Like, yeah, and it, CBS. They got the, the, after, yeah. Yeah, the afternoon slot. So it's like, what's available? Mm -hmm. How is it available? How are you going to go about refunding that money? Maybe it's just a big makeup of the money, but then what is ESPN and Fox? ESPN and Fox are just going to, and CBS are just going to go, and NBC are going to go, okay, yeah, we'll pay more now for, like, it's not how business <laughs> works. Yeah, <I> <laughs> That's not how. I don't know how it all. I don't know how it all comes together. If it was a perfect plan with the perfect people involved, I think a lot of people would be much more wide open to it. But who is the perfect group to decide what this is going to be? That's going to be debated now. Yeah. Seems like there's a lot more questions than answers. But what we do know is there are groups of people now trying to put together their plan and meet with people in positions of power, which we mm -hmm. appreciate this group doing, trying oh, yeah. to make this thing happen. But this is just one of many, is seemingly what Pete is saying. Yeah. Hopefully, if anything, like. They learn from the P the PGA in the PIF situation. Like the NCAA should look at this and be like, okay, if this is going to happen and continue to happen, and if Thamel wrote about this six, six weeks ago and this is going to be something that's going to be a conversation no matter what because these people want it, they should hopefully be like, hey, PIF got all these guys out of PGA. We can't have that happen with any of the our athletes. So let's just take their model and use it. How about, though, that college sports tomorrow, six weeks ago? <sighs> <laughs> All right, didn't catch on. Nope. All right, let's go to a drier time in sports yep. media. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try to – let's drum up a little bit more here. Boom, it's coming. Maybe more people catch on. Maybe more people get behind it. Maybe the public, you know, because if you win the mob, you win yep. Rome. Mm -hmm. That is a real thing, especially whenever it comes to TV mm -hmm. ratings and entertainment and everything like that. So taking another <laughs> shot at it, I appreciate it. I'm excited to see what the next group is trying to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, because this is Roger Goodell's right hand. This is the NFL's right. mm -hmm. team kind of coming together here. Now, we have been told from source – says that Roger Goodell is not involved in this at all. Mm -hmm. The man, Brian Rolap, potentially, because his kid, I think, is a Michigan, he's got a kid coming in high mm -hmm. school, so mm -hmm. like, the future of college football is something that is very interesting. Like, I'm not saying he's 
he wants to make it right, I think, yes. for the good of his for his kids. Mm -hmm. Now, is there a vested mm -hmm. interest as well, business-wise? Sure. Well, he's the NFL's business, one of the... Right. Yes. Yeah. So, Always. There's certainly something in there, but we have been told from source... Says that Roger Goodell was not just because this guy is a part of it doesn't mean Roger Goodell's a part of it. Because as soon as I read that, I was like, Well, if Roger Goodell's a part of this, they need to do this yeah. yes. mm -hmm. tomorrow. But Roger Goodell not involved with this, his right hand man, Brian Rollap. Yeah, and if, if college football, like they're dipping their toe in right now to being professional, and you can't just dip your toe in, like if players are going to get paid in whatever manner it is, whether it's from the school or whatever it is. You're gonna have to go. Let's just let's just go fully professional, so that there is there is the guardrails, there is boundaries and stuff like that. And Connor said, learning from the PIF and the PGA situation, Rolap has been a name that's been thrown out a ton to take over that new organization that's gonna be formed. So like, you would think that he would be looking at that situation and then also seeing this college football situation, and be like, oh yeah, these two are very similar. Very similar, yeah. And instead <laughs> of players, you're talking about schools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and it's uh, I'll be excited to see how it pans out because we we could learn from what we the fans have experience with live in PGA. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, what we don't like yeah. is this whole thing. Split. We can't be taking, you know, like Bama and then not taking Tennessee. Right. Like, you can't, you know, there can't be... The college football product is incredible right incredible. now. Incredible. Yeah, it we can't, so good. can't be, you know, this has to be a... Yes, a come, exactly. Oh, not, as opposed to what happened with Liv, where it was just like some going. Yes. Yeah, you gotta have... You gotta, this has to be mm -hmm. a full thing, which they will obviously learn from. In the future, will hopefully be brighter for the student human athletes. That's